today I want to talk all about furniture and that is the equipment that the bird of prey wears themselves. So there are a few basic things which you will always see on a bird of prey or you'll wonder about using if you are a newcomer to falconry and you're just looking at getting your own bird. So hopefully this will help answer some of your questions and explain what each bit is and what it's called. What I find really interesting about falconry equipment is that although materials have got better over time and certain materials have changed as we've developed better techniques, largely the equipment we use is the same as the equipment that was used a long time ago because it works, because it's safe and secure and because it doesn't cause the birds any injuries or problems. So a basic setup for a bird of prey looks like this. We have two anklets at the top here. I'm going to have to imagine that there's a bird of prey obviously wearing this. So these little anklets, which I'll show you up close, are what go around each bird's legs. These are usually fixed permanently onto the bird's legs until the falconer decides to remove them and then he'll replace with a new set. From each anklet you've then got the jesses, which are the long straps that hang down. These are what the falconer will hold on to, either when he's carrying a bird around on a glove or when he's maybe about to let go of a bird before they start flying, if they're going to wear jesses while they fly. So you have your long straps that come down. They then meet and are attached to something called a swivel. So this is our swivel here. And then from the swivel, we have the leash and the leash will either be tethered to the falconer's glove or to a perch if they're being put out on a lawn in order to weather. So this is your basic setup. I'm now going to talk you through each part individually so we can see them a bit more up close and get an understanding for why we use each part. Firstly, we have our anklet, which is just a strip of leather. It has a hole at each end, which is where we're going to put an eyelet. And then it has, if you look closely, lots of little slits at both the top and the bottom. And these slits allow the leather to spread out so that when it's touching the bird's feet or it's on the bird's leg, you haven't got a single sharp edge that's going to rub. So the little feathered bottoms and tops help the anklet to remain nice and comfortable and not cause any kind of rubbing. So we use basic brass eyelets, which will go through one end and then if this was around the bird's leg it would be closed with that eyelet so you would use your other piece and an eyelet closer and that's pressed into place so that that anklet will then stay on the bird's leg. Now the anklet needs to freely rotate around the bird's legs. If this is too tight, then it risks causing swelling or rubbing, it could hide injuries, it could cause a lot of problems to that bird's leg. Or if it's too loose, it risks stretching, moving around too much, or even the bird getting a back talon stuck through that eyelet because it's dropping back too far. So make sure that there is enough room so that it freely rotates around the bird's leg, but that it's not any looser than that. Leather will naturally stretch itself as it wears anyway, so there will be a point where they will start to look looser and you will feel like you need to change them. So from the anklet, we then have the jesses. Now, traditionally, jesses are made out of leather and that's still the case today. And there's nothing wrong with using leather. A lot of falconers like kangaroo leather because it's very strong, but very supple. Some people still use calf leather and some people will even use stallion leather. If you're going to use leather, make sure that you find an experienced falconer who can help you to choose the right thickness of leather and the right type of leather and help you to make them. As well as leather, people are using forms of paracord or these braided jesses which are essentially technically a lot stronger less likely to fail as long as the bird doesn't pick at them a lot of birds will leave these alone and that's great and they are really good jesses to use you can wash them and re-wax them and they seem to last quite a long time compared to leather especially if you've got a bird who likes to bathe a lot because that can fatigue the leather a lot quicker um, however it's worth monitoring a bird the first time you put these kind of jesses on because some of them really like to have a good pick and if they're left alone for long enough they could potentially unpick some of that jess. It's worth paying close attention when you first put new equipment on a bird to make sure that it suits the bird 
bird and the bird is comfortable with it and that they're going to leave it alone. Obviously you should never leave your bird unattended for a long period because you don't know what they can do when you're not around. We then come on to swivels. Now swivels again come in at lots of different shapes and sizes, slightly different designs. The more classical sort of swivel are these ones with the round top to them, but also we equally find that these sort of square top swivels, and this is a total personal preference thing. So people just choose the swivels that they prefer to use. You'll also find swivels that look more like this, which are sometimes made out of titanium. These are a similar design, they all do the same job. A lot of this comes down to personal preference and I recently have been trying out titanium swivels and actually really like them. They seem a lot lighter um, and that's just something that I really like on my larger birds. Swivels of course come in all different sizes so we have big swivels like this for a buzzard eagle or teeny tiny swivels like this for something like a kestrel or a little owl. So the most important thing to consider with all your equipment as you're doing it is is it safe and secure and is it simple? You don't need anything that's super fancy, you can keep it very simple, ideally as little as possible. You don't want your bird looking like a decorated Christmas tree. They want as little on them as possible and as small as possible. Just like with the Jesses, leashes also come in a different sort of variety of materials. So the typical leashes that we see are these sort of braided cotton leashes. They're very commonly available on any of sort of the falconry retailers. They usually finish off with a button top to them. People have also moved on to things like these paracorded loop leashes. So these work like a slip knot. So basically they just loop around the swivel end in a slip knot and then you've got a little tab that you can pull to loosen them. And again, they can also come in these braided designs as well. Uh, this one is actually a double looped leash. I'll show you up close. So it has quite an interesting sort of way that it's threaded on. These are the type that I like to use and I find that they keep the leash away from the swivel so it just helps with any kind of potential tangles that may happen. So in order to tether your bird of prey, the only things you need are anklets, jesses, a swivel and a leash. Very, very simple. It's always really helpful to have a few of everything. Even if you only have one bird, it only takes one adventure out to drop a swivel or a leash in the grass and you'll just never find it. That's often why people like to go for quite bright designs because you have a habit of dropping them and this is much easier to see in the grass than something that's brown. Now one of the other things that we put on a bird are bells and these again come in a range of sizes. They have a beautiful sound to them but more than just sounding nice these help you to locate your bird. With the exception of owls, we do put bells on most diurnal birds of prey. Now, the point of them isn't to make a nice sound, but it's actually to locate your bird. And this can be very important, especially if you're hunting somewhere where there's a lot of cover. You may see where you think your bird went in, but you then don't know what's happened. They could have easily run along the floor, got dragged along by the prey that they're trying to catch, and it can be hard to locate them without a bell. I put bells on a bird before the flying session and then remove them afterwards. Some people put them onto the bird and keep them on the bird but this will be dependent on a lot of different factors in terms of where you live or the way that you keep your birds when they're not being flown so there can be lots of different decisions about where and how you put bells. Bells are either attached onto the leg on a thin leather strap called a buet and that sits just above the anklet or sometimes they're fixed onto the tail. This can be quite useful with birds of prey like Harris hawks who like to swing and bob their tail when they see something of interest because they will ring their bell so if the bird is above you hunting from a tree then you're going to hear that bell go and you know that there's going to be something of interest for that bird. The other thing you will see on a bird is a long wire but it's not just a wire it's something called telemetry. It looks like this it has a little unit at the top here and a long antenna and again these look slightly different they come in different sizes and designs depending on the type of transmitter. Now before telemetry falconers had to solely rely on the bell in order to track their bird of prey down and they'd have a good sense of field craft so they might see uh, corvids or other birds getting up and mobbing a tree where their bird's likely to be so their sense of field craft would have to be good but now we also have these telemetry transmitters so the falconer carries a receiver and the bird wears a transmitter again on their leg 
on their tail or sometimes in what we call a backpack mount so that's where it's sort of fixed with a special teflon ribbon which goes around the chest and the transmitter itself lays between the shoulder blades it's a very very good method of mounting so again the way you choose to mount your telemetry will depend on the species of bird and what it might tolerate but Falconers nowadays have a real privilege to be able to use telemetry because it's going to minimise the time we have to track down our bird. It's not going to guarantee that we're going to get that bird back always, but it's going to give us a good chance to find them as soon as possible. The final piece of equipment that you might see on a bird at some point is a hood. Now hoods have lots of uses, but really they work very much like blinkers on a horse. So they reduce stress, they keep the bird calm. When we're initially training a bird, we will often choose to hood the bird to relieve it of all the surrounding stress that's going on around it so when we unhood the bird we can choose that controlled time initially in the first few days to allow the bird to gently get used to us before it all becomes too much of an overload and becomes highly stressful it can also be useful when you're out and about i could be somewhere quiet with my bird around here and before i know it a plane is flying over very low and very loudly and this is something the bird might not have seen before and i could have been having a really good training session to that point and rather than losing that good time that I've had and taking a backward step I can quickly get my hood out pop the hood over the bird let the plane pass or what other scary thing it is and then we can just pop the hood off again and resume training so it's a great tool which birds get used to very quickly it's also fantastic for things like going to the vet or having to change equipment or manage their beak if their beaks overgrown we might have to have a session coping their beak so the hood, if it's used right and trained well with a bird, is going to be a great tool. Now the great thing about falconry equipment now is that you don't have to make it yourself. There are loads of good falconry suppliers, certainly in Britain, in Europe and America. Things like hood making are really an art to their own and there are some very, very talented people that make hoods. So it's often much easier to go to someone and say, I've got this type of bird, I need a hood that's going to suit them and then that person will be able to fit a hood perfectly to your bird. However, most of the equipment is easy to make yourself with a bit of practice so I would always advise newcomers to get used to making your own equipment just in case you have to make some and that might just be because you can't get some new equipment bought in quick enough. Birds are quite good at losing bits of equipment as are falconers um, and it just helps take any stress away if you know how you can make that equipment. As always, thank you so much much for watching thank you to all my channel supporters thank you for all your messages i'm trying to get through them all where time allows me i will see you all very soon